<clears throat> so at this point we've got this plugin, WP e-commerce. Uh, we've looked at most of the screens of how to use it, how to set it up. Obviously in a class like this I can talk in general how WordPress works, how these plugins work, but then you probably have your own unique requirements and I'm happy to talk to you uniquely individually during the breaks and such to figure out how WordPress works best for you. But in general, I have to talk about it in general uh, to cover as many things as possible. But if you'd like to talk about individual things, we can do so. And then I often get questions that are specific and I have to have an answer such as, well, I don't know how to do that specifically, but we can look it up. And that's the great thing about WordPress, that it comes officially from a company, but because it's open, it's it's a system that allows other people to add to it. Your problem has probably a solution from someone else that also had that question. So if I need a way to keep track of receipts, there's probably a plugin that does that. If I need a way to connect my website to my QuickBooks, there's probably a way to do that. I don't have experience with every aspect of every e-commerce or possible website, but we can look it up together. Um, so Today we have the goals of looking at uh, variations because in our products section of WP Commerce we looked at all of these screens. The last one to look at variations. It takes a little bit conceptually to understand how it works, and then we can uh, then we can uh, then we can use it. Let's go to products and then variations. There's a big explanation at the top. Variations allow you to create options for your products. For example, you're selling t-shirts. They will have a size option. You can create this as a variation. Size will be the variation set name, and it will have a new variant set. You will then create variants, which are the small, medium, and the large, which will have the variation set of size. Once you've made your set, you can use the table on the right. Okay, so the way this is going to work, this is a great example about clothing t-shirts. I would like to sell small, medium, and large shirts. So I have a product of red shirt, and I need to sell it as small, medium, and large. Those are variations of the red shirt. For us, we're going to do it in terms about cookies. I want to sell cookies in batches of 12 at a time, 6 at a time, 24 at a time. So cookie is the main thing I'm selling, and to it I will be able to sell batches or sizes. Let's say also with pies. I want to sell, um, you know, uh, lemon meringue pie, and I want to sell it as either a 9-inch pie size diameter or 12-inch. So two variations of that product. So the way this works is we're creating a new variation set. It's like the parent. What's its name, description, price, and such? Well, what varies here is maybe I'm selling the half dozen cookies at a certain price, and then the full dozen at another price, and then two dozen at another price. So I can control all of these prices based on how much I sell. So let's say we're going to start with cookies. I want to sell them in different batches. So what could be like a term for the collection of cookies that I'm going to sell? A three pack. Now, pre packed. Pre packed. Pre -packed. Um, that could be a way, yeah? Pre packed, pre packaged. Pre packed. Um, I was saying, um, I was giving it away by saying batch. That's a common way, uh, a batch of cookies and such. So let's say cookie batch. This is a batch, this is a collection of cookies. Um, this will work, but let's think one step ahead because I, I've taught this class several times, I have a plan for it, and the questions always come up and the pitfalls come up. If we call this cookie batch, this variation that we're about to create only applies to cookies. But let's say I'm going to sell cupcakes. I want to sell cupcakes also in collections of 3 or 6 or 12 or whatever. So I'd have to create a new variation set cupcake batch. And let's say I want to sell other things in groups, uh, maybe lollipops. I want to sell six, six at a time, 12 at a time, 24 at a time. What I'm getting at is that we, we don't need to be so specific 
right here to say cookie batch. If we say batch or group or collection or pack or p-pack or, or whatever word we want to use, the more generic it is, the better, because then we can reuse it. We can just set the price properly per product. Batch would apply to cookie batches, cupcake batches, lollipop batches. Slug, again, always fills itself in. That'll be batch, lowercase description. We can say anything we want here because we're thinking more generically a batch of cookies, a batch of cupcakes, a batch of lollipops. We have to think in those terms. If we say a batch of six cookies, a batch of 12 cookies, well, again, we get into that problem. Batch, we're going to reuse it for different products. So choose uh, 6, 12, or 24 at a time. That's generic enough that it'll apply for the cookies and the lollipops and everything. There is a variation price, which uh, I don't recommend to set it here. We have a different screen to use it at. But here it tells you you can set yourself up that depending on the product you're trying to sell, this is going to be the minimal set of six will have a minimum price of, I don't know, $5. But again, the problem there is we're setting up this batch uh, for cookies, lollipops, and cupcakes. So $5 for six lollipops might be too much, too little. For cupcakes, it may be too much, too little. So I don't recommend setting a price here. We'll set it up once we attach it to the product. Uh, you can even do percentages. So. 50%, 24 costs 50% more than 6 batch. Click Add New Variation. Then on the right side you get a new sort of parent element, batch, etc. That can be SEO optimized as well. That comes from the description. How to set up variations. What's the parent group? What are the child groups? So for example, batch six group of six or twelve or twenty-four. That's the child. The batch, the parent, that's that. So the confusing thing is we just created the parent, now it's time to create the groups. And it's confusing because you have to then select here. Add a new variation, and the parent is batch. So make sure you created batch first before you can select it here or nothing is listed. So I'm about to create the 6, the 12, the 24 units of the batch name. This is what will appear for people when they choose their product. Uh, you're going to have a little drop-down box for the person to choose. Like if I'm going to buy that red shirt, small, medium, large. Uh, if it was a t-shirt, I would have the red shirt and I'd have a little box and the box is most likely named size. Size would be the parent in that case. And then the variants would be small, medium, and large. What I'm about to do here so these things will be visible to people. Someone's going to buy my cookies. There will be a drop-down box called Batch. And from the list of possibilities is going to be one dozen. Anything I want to call them, of course. But I'm going to say one dozen. I'll skip the description for the moment and add variation. So now one dozen will be a drop-down element of the batch selector. Then I'll um, create another batch or another variant of the parent set, uh, two dozen. So I'm covering the one, I'm covering the 12 and the 24 sized pack. Uh, <coughs> what could be the six pack? Half 
dozen. We'll be able to organize these in the drop-down list on a separate screen. We can drag and drop them on a separate screen. But what I've got here then is a cookie. <coughs> we have a selector. It will then let us do half, dozen, one dozen, and two dozen. And then we'll set the prices. So we need that first. We should have batch plus the variance. So we've got variant set, and we've got variation. first, then attach to a product, then set prices. That's how I would recommend to do it. These can be done out of order. You can create a product and at the same time create a variation and then set your prices. But um, I kind of like to do it this way. Maybe step before that, create a product, then the variations, attach the variation, and then set prices. So let's go over to our products. Let's create a new product. I want to create a new kind of product. We have so far birthday cake, chocolate chip cookie, oatmeal raisin. Let's create a brand new product here. Add new. Lollipop. Let's do strawberry lollipop. Then we have to deal with different flavors. That would be more variations. But we could do variations on top of variations. It gets more complex, but we'll see that. So strawberry lollipop. And we can say anything we want here. Our signature classic strawberry lollipop. Pop has two L's. Well, Lollipop is a brand new category. Remember, we can create categories on the spot here. I would prefer to create them first, but this is another way to do it. So I've got Lollipop. Let's create a new product category. Plus new category. So click on that. Plus new, plus add new category. We're creating a new category of Lollipops. should rename these uh, create new product category or name new product category and then add it because you have to click here first to make the name and then click here to actually create it and add it to the product and you can have your items in more than one category um, you know I can add select multiple categories if they make sense and the point of that is that when I set up my menus and I make a menu of sugar-free, everything that is a sugar-free product shows up on that screen. We have primary and we have secondary categories. Um, I don't quite know uh, if there's any real value to primary and secondary designation. I, I've used this plugin for years and this is a relatively new addition to, to the plugin. So I don't know if it really helps SEO or anything like that, but 
um, I would think to make the primary the one that it primarily is. This is a lollipop. You can switch between them and I don't think there's too much of a difference. But in my case I'll just leave it as simply one product category of lollipops. Uh, okay, so then here we should set a base price. The, there's the possibility, this happened a few years ago, we've used this plugin, my company has used this plugin for real clients, and it's worked just fine. There was one instance, however, some weird bug perhaps, of what happened was a person never chose a, a variation. And when they tried to buy the product, the product was zero dollars because we never set this basic price. There should have been no way to select to buy the product without choosing a variation first. But some bug happened and the person was about to get it for zero cost. So I would always at least put some sort of minimal value here. Let's say, I don't know, two dollars. So if for some reason they don't choose half dozen, one dozen, whatever, there is at least that amount of, that's going to be charged. If you keep going later, here we go, variations. You can create variants and variations from this screen, but I, I, I don't like it uh, doing it here because I'm in the middle of creating a product, my computer could crash, and then I'm also in the middle of creating a variation and I lose that effort. So I like to create variations separately on their own screen where I know then they get saved and then work with the product. So the way this works is I, we currently have the batch variant that we can work with. The little triangle lets us see that inside of that we have one, two, and half dozen possibilities. If I click the check mark on batch, this product is going to then, the user is going to be able to select one, two, or half a dozen lollipops. If I only want to sell this in one and two dozen, obviously I turn on only one and two dozen. But in this case I want people to be able to buy lollipops with all these variations. Then you have to click generate these variations. They will then create entries in the database to show there's this product with these elements, sub-elements, prices, etc. So check these on and remember to turn on Generate Variations. That then switches you over here to Manage. We have to first set up or attach a variation and then we can manage. Here we have, we can do individual pictures for each one of these variations we're trying to sell. We can attach a SKU to each of these, some sort of stock keeping unit, which is optional. And as I said previously, the SKU is just some sort of tracking number in your own inventory, uh, if you'd like to use it. Taxable, taxable amount, how many in stock, sale price. The most important thing here, obviously, is price. We have set a basic price of $2, but now here's where I can set these prices. Half dozen. Half dozen uh, will be my starting point, let's say. I'm going to say half dozen uh, costs um, five dollars, uh, one dozen eleven dollars, two dozen twenty dollars. I don't know, I'm just thinking of prices. I don't know if these are economically feasible, but these are just some prices I thought of. So the point is a person will be able to buy these in these increments for these prices. Here's some more marketing strategy uh, I could have here 22 regular or you know, 23 regular price and original no uh, I know we could do 25 regular price and 24 sale price so see it's on sale I'm gonna buy I'm gonna save more when I buy more 
so they will see that the price of 25 is crossed out and the sale price of 24. So again, these prices, I'm making them up. I don't know if they're economically viable. So you'll figure that out with your own product. And when people see a sale, it tends to cause them to buy more. Save the variations. To see this result, then we have to publish on the top right corner. You go ahead and publish. Go to visit your site, and then uh, view the view your view your shop, and check out how Lollipop works. So I published it. I'll visit site. I'll click on shop alphabetically. Terry Lollipop right there. It doesn't appear in a category because we didn't create a category in our menu. If you remember how to do that, you can create a new category of Lollipops to display in the menu. At least now they show in the shop alphabetically. And I see strawberry right there. Batch. That's the term that we used as the unit of purchase. We select. Inside of there we've got what we can buy each of. Question? It should show if you, you have to remember, did you click pu publish? Go back to the top and click publish. We save the variations and such, but you have to also click publish. Okay, let me check one moment. Okay. Uh, that most likely is happening because you didn't set your Apache rewrite module. Do you remember going to WAMP Apache rewrite and all that? Yes, you can still do it. All right, so before I select anything here, uh, price from $5, that's the minimum price I put without any selection first. And then I have the half dozen and all of that. So if I choose the half dozen, then it's okay. For half a dozen, it's $5. I'm doing one dozen, it's 11 And then old price, current price, you save $1, 4%. So again, you convince people you're saving by spending more. Um, that's how the variation concept works. This is strawberry lollipop. Let's say we do uh, lollipop grab bag. That in there, it's going to have four flavors randomly. So we want to choose uh, how many of those you want to buy. Again, this is going to be like for a birthday party. I, I want to buy you know, a dozen grab bags. And then I, I could choose, uh, I don't know, batches of little bags with like, you know, Batman on them or Wonder Woman on them or SpongeBob on them. So that could be a variation. What kind of character is going to be on the bag and how many of those bags do you want to buy? So that'll be two variations, character and batch. So let's see how that works. Let's go create the variation set first, and we'll attach it to a product. We'll go back to dashboard. We'll go to products and then variations. I'm going to reuse batch. We created it generically enough that it'll still work. One dozen of, uh, of the grab bags, two dozen of the grab bags, that's fine. I didn't call them, uh, you know, cookie batch. Uh, it wouldn't make sense for lollipops, so batch is good. Uh, here we're going to create a new variation set, a new parent, and we'll call it character. 
your favorite character. Save that or add a new variation. Add character. From here, then I'm gonna. You need to make sure to select parent, or else it's gonna be completely wrong. You need to remember to select character. We'll have Batman. Now Batman is one of the selectable characters. Woman. SpongeBob. And whatever we want, Babs Bunny. We'll do it old school. Okay, so I've got a few characters. A few characters that are part of the character. Uh, variation. We're going to attach character and we're going to attach batch to a new product. Lollipop grab bag. So we'll uh, create a new product. Lollipop grab bag. Random assortment of tasty lollipops with your favorite character. Category is lollipops. Character is character is going to be a variation. So now when we scroll down to variations here, you can choose these. Let's say I'm we're only going to sell batches of one and two dozen, but then all possible characters. So all of these plus these two generate. When you click Generate, then it takes you back to Manage. And now we get into the issue about, depending how complex you want to be, now you have a lot to do here. Now I've got eight items attached to this product. Look at that. I've got now to deal with all of these price-wise and such. Um, I've dealt with a client that has sold uh, a lot of products in a variety of variations, and it can get really tricky when you have a lot of combinations. So notice, we got one dozen Babs Bunny, one dozen Wonder Woman, two dozen Spongebob. So now all of these are going to need to be priced. Well, that's a lot of selecting and changing the price. At least what we can do, though, is if you select the ones that are related, so all of these of one dozen, there will be they will be the same price. 
one. It's one dozen. The character is not what changes the price. It's the size. So if you select all of these that are related, you can go to Bulk Actions, Edit. These four that I've selected, I will edit all of them at once. Click Apply, and that will let you set these values quickly. All of them will have a price of uh, $11.50, regular price $12, $12.99, and then I'll save that. So those four that I've selected then get updated. So it could be a lot of effort to create the variations and to update them and so forth. Batch. Remember to batch edit them. That's very helpful. Bulk edit them, that is. With the two dozen, just make up a price, but the point is select those and then edit in bulk. I think, that, I think I did that backwards, didn't I? I put the more expensive price as the sale price. Okay, regular price, uh, $25, $25.99, and sale price, uh, $23. So I can go back and set that properly, because the sale price that's more expensive is not a good deal. Okay, so one product, eight variations that comes from the two variation variants, var uh, parents. So I'm going to publish that. I'll take a little detour to create the, the menu item. It, it's not a menu item in the category. So um, that's over under Appearance, Menus. I have a brand new... I have a brand new product category, Lollipops. So I'll add that to the menu, and then I'll move it so that it's part of Categories in Shop. Save the menu, and now when I visit site, I'll have a new item in the menu. I can go to the shop, which is alphabetical, and I'll find Lollipop Grab Bag. Or I can go to the shop categories. I've got lollipops. Notice the design's a little bit different. And when I look here, uh, so now, um, minimum price. Oh, forgot to set the minimum price. Uh, there's an edit button there. I'll go back first. Minimum price. Remember, without the variations, this is technically set to to zero. I'll go back to edit the lollipop grab bag. Uh, oh, okay, never mind. This product has variations. Price ceiling. Okay, never mind. Uh, that was that was that that fixed then what I had that issue with that I said earlier that uh, there was the possibility at one point to accidentally sell a product without a price if it had variations. It looks like it, that's been fixed because now it is directly tied to the variation. So never mind. But if we go back to the shop and then the categories, lollipops, 
So we've got two lollipops, the grab bag and the strawberry. And then under lollipop grab bag, okay, I'm going to select a batch of two dozen for everyone in the group. And then uh, you need to then select the other option. Full price, new price, save 11.50%. You can still then set it up to have the drop-down menu here, so technically a person can choose, if they wanted a lot of them, two dozen, and give me you know, give me five of those, two times twelve. What is that, like seventy-five or something? So you get a lot of, um, you can get a lot more, even though you've only got it in groups of dozens. Is the look of this, is it set in uh, the WP Commerce, or is it is the look related to the theme you choose? It's mostly to the theme. Okay. So we will take a little diversion in a little bit to look at some other themes that look a little better, because, yeah, it kind of looks too cluttered and kind of crunched up. So it's the theme that dictates how it looks. Functionality is the plugin, but the, the design of it is the theme. So that's the idea of variations. You can have multiple variant sets attached to a product. Should use bulk edit. To work with many at once. Create variant sets as generically as possible. It's perfectly okay to create uh, variation sets, variant sets uh, that are specifically named cookie batch. That's perfectly fine if, if that works for you. I just, in my experience with working with some of these clients that needed to do this, it was a lot better to work with a generic term than a specific term. Okay, so all of the big ideas of the WP Commerce, we've, we've talked about them. It then has to do with what do people individually need to do. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit to, to talk about other WordPress things, but are there general questions about the WP Commerce? We see once we've set it up and how to use it and all of that, it, you know, it's, still, it's up to you to decide how to use it, but are there general questions on how it works? we can't really fully test it like, well, how does it look like when I sell a product? We can't quite test that because there's no, it's not online for real to, to, to buy. But maybe what, I'll, what I could do a little bit later is load up an example of a real client and see how it looks behind the scenes. But basically you see all your sales, you go to a store sales, you see the invoice and everything there, and then it's still up to you to fulfill it because this will let the money transfer and it will tell you the product's been bought but you still need to put it in the mail you still need to get it out of the inventory and, sh and package it and ship it and you still need to communicate with your client that's not automatic uh, you still have to do that yourself the closest thing we can try this the closest thing is that if we go over to settings store, 
payments, we can have the test gateway. I guess it is there. The test gateway is a way to sort of simulate it um, for this to work. You, you could create another way is to create products of one dollar and turn on the real payment system like PayPal and then buy yourself. Have yourself buy something or someone you know buy something for one dollar. So we can try this. If you turn it on to test gateway and then you try to go through the process adding items to your cart. I did add the lollipops there. So you can test it. Here I'm about to buy $78 worth of stuff. I have to fill all of this in and then click purchase and it will then show up as an entry in the store sales screen to show something's been bought. Well, well, when this was set up several years ago for these clients that need the e-commerce, we did do the testing as much as we could in, um, you know, in in localhost with the test product, and we did do you know a dollar product, but that that stuff works, you know, it's because PayPal is taking over. PayPal just works. Once you've got that set up, it will collect the money, no problem at all. The problem is, how does the fulfillment happen of shipping the product, packaging the product, and all of that, and that we can't really test. But all of the payment collection, all of that works. The in decrease of the inventory, all of that works. It's just the actual, you know, uh, manpower of it all, I guess, that needs to be tested, and that's hard to test unless you actually do it. So the um, related to the shopping cart, what I wanted to do is um, this theme maybe isn't the best design for a shopping cart. There's this design that has a lot of uh, empty space, and that's designed like that because this is more for a blog. A website that focuses on writing, you don't want the text to go completely across the screen. It's too much text. If you look at most websites, most blogs, they don't take 100%, they take 75% or less of the screen because studies show people are have a harder time reading longer blocks of text, horizontal blocks. If there's a big block of text from here to here, people are going to zone out quickly. So in this design, this is good because then the text is this much. But for our shopping cart, it's not good. It's too confined, constrained. So what we'll do is We'll go, we'll go look at some themes. We'll go try to find some themes that are uh, a little bit more e-commerce friendly. Let's go uh, to your dashboard and the themes. Appearance themes. Add new. I'm going to search for e-commerce. 160 results. So looking at the preview, you get a general sense of how it may look like. I see one called Simple Store. I haven't really looked at any of these myself, so we'll we'll see how it looks. But if you search e-commerce and you see Simple Store, that might be one to use. What we could do is if you uh, preview it, Sort of shows it, but still even different from their own example. So there's really no way to make sure how does it really work unless you install it. And that's easy. They're, they're free, so no, no big deal. What I'm going to do, actually, uh, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to install Simple Store, and I'm also going to install one that I see here just here called Sabino. I don't know which of the two will be better. You can choose any of these. Maybe you want Metro Store or anything else you find. You, you can explore it. But I've got Simple Store and then Sabino. And then I'm going to activate Simple Store first and see what it looks like a bit. And then if I like it, that might be good. If not, I can go look at another one. So activate. 
Oh, one thing that I see here. This is very common, and we'll see this definitely with WooCommerce when we get to it soon. The theme recommends the following plugins. So a lot of the times the way a theme can look really nice is also a, with extra plugins that give it more functionality. So a special grid design or a special commerce and all of that feature often means like that. I won't install it yet, but notice it's asking me to install CMD2. I don't know what that is. Here's the toolkit. I don't know what that is. It's saying, oh, why don't you get WooCommerce? So WooCommerce seems to work best with this theme. So we'll skip that for the moment. And then these other extra WooCommerce elements. So I'm going to ignore the recommendations for the moment. And I'm going to see what the site looks like. And anyway, this one's still for, uh, guiding you over to WooCommerce. So we'll see that later. But I'm going to go visit site. I need to add the menu. My sidebars. I put the, we put those calendars in the footer, and then in this design, it's on the sidebar. So if we customize, I want to add menus, menu locations, main. So whenever you get any of these themes, most likely then you want to customize and go through each of these screens and set some settings that look good to you. Site identity, logo, site icon, colors, background image. So depending on the design, you're going to get these different um, possibilities. So right there, I put a background picture behind everything have some options. And use widgets. We've got a right sidebar and a footer. Static front page. I see, need more features. That most likely is the code word for upgrade, right? Buy the pro version. $49 one time fee. Free versus premium. So they all have responsive layout. You only have one header style on the free one. You have three on the paid one. You don't get a. You do not get a homepage carousel, which is a slideshow. These are very popular. You see these images on the home screen. They change every once in a while. Carousel. You don't get that with the free version of the plugin. The paid one does have it. You know, all of these things you don't have, such as unlimited colors. Right now, maybe I have six colors to choose from, so I would need to upgrade to get those features. Update and support. The free version, you get this theme. You're on your own. Read the manual. Uh, and then the paid version, you get support. So uh, you can uh, get support straight from the creators that tell you exactly how it works and all of that. Usually, at the very least, on the site, there's usually at least, here's the manual, support, go read the documentation. So this one's called Mac Store Pro. Looking at the documentation for Mac Store Pro right here, Mac Store is the free version. So here's the full in, here's the full how to set up the theme, how to update it, menus and top bar and everything. So this is this is very common. We have a world of themes to work with and plugins. And there's often a manual. When you go back to the website of the creators, there's a manual. They're gonna guide you toward the paid version, but you can get 
pretty far with the, with the free version. So people often come to me and they say, well, here's my site and I've tried to work with it, I don't understand how it works, can you help me? And the short answer is no, because I've never seen that, that theme before. The short answer, uh, the long answer is RTFM. Do you know what RTFM stands for? Read the funky manual. <laughs> funky manual. So you go to it and read the manual. It'll tell you how it works. I don't know how it works. I've never seen it in my life. I could help you, but I would read the manual too. Yes? How did you get to that site? In this case, the way I got to it, and it's different for all of them. In this case, when I went to, when I clicked uh, customize this theme, on the left side it says need more features, and I went to view pro version. That took me to their official website, and then on their official website, I went to the documentation. This theme is called Mac Store Pro. I went to the support documentation, and I got the manual for Mac Store. So there's a lot of... it is different for every developer, but usually you go to the original website, you look at their support, and there's a manual somewhere. Oh, I see. I think a new uh, Pro version, mm -hmm. and you got the right one. Good. So search bar and, I, and social icons. I want to use icons on this site. How does that work? It tells you exactly there. To enable search bar navigation, go here, go there, turn this on, turn that on, and then you'll have that. They often also say, well, the best way this works is with this extra plugin. So out of the box, this design is OK. It's still going to recommend to me to um, activate those extra features. But let's see, I'm going to go to the shop. How does the shop look? It looks better, I think. Definitely, it's not so boxed in. If I look at oatmeal, raisin, cookie, nice big photo, lots of space to breathe, add to cart, go to checkout. It's nice. Compared to the 2017 theme, this is nice and readable and big with spacing and everything. So this again goes back to that idea. It depends on the theme. This looks really nice, but what I would love is for the name of my business to be in the center. The short answer is that if you don't have the option in the customization, you can't do it. The long answer is you have to write custom code. If you know the code, you can move that to the center, but you need to know the code. Or if you pay for the pro version, there's probably more options to uh, give you more customization. So let me mention here three levels of WordPress. So level one, uh, pre made theme plus customize. That's what I've, we've got right now. We are checking out the Theme Max Store Pro. Mac Store, and then I've gone to Customize. And based on what they've allowed us to customize, I've customized my store to some point. This is the basic level. And this would be, if someone was hiring us, this would be the basic price. Level 2, pre-made theme plus customize plus custom code. That then starts to raise up in price. So starting with Max Pro and doing enough of the customization that they allow, plus then going to the various code editors in WordPress, we then write the custom code to put the logo in a certain place, to change the widths of the columns, 
to change the fonts, to change all of the things that were not given to us under Customize. And we are allowed to do this because the, the license of WordPress and, and the WordPress themes is this must be allowed. Anyone that creates a WordPress theme must then put it out there for anyone else to be able to change it. It's built into the contract, the license of WordPress. Yes? So, let's say you have five different businesses and you purchase one theme. Mm -hmm. Can you reuse that theme for each of your businesses? You have to check the license of the theme. It really varies. Some, if you pay you know, $50 one-time fee, applies to only one theme. But for others, you pay, I don't know, like a $60 price and it can work up to three sites. Okay. So check the, the fine print of each of the themes. We've got level three. All custom code. And that one's a little more expensive. Because with that one, it's us creating a design completely different from anyone else, any other competitor. And that requires a lot of coding, a lot of setup and a lot of coding because a WordPress site is made out of like four languages HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and PHP and those are huge programming languages that you can spend you know semesters and semesters in school learning one of them you have to basically know them all, all four to create a good WordPress theme so if a company were coming to us we have a meeting with a potential client, they tell us what kind of store they want or site they want, and we tell them right away, here are your options. We can work with this level, you'll get a nice design. Uh, the upside is it's less expensive, but the downside is your theme may look similar to someone else's in the world, or someone else that is also a realtor. Okay, the next level up, you want to be more unique. We go to the next level, it's a little more expensive, we'll write some custom code for you. It'll be different enough from the competition, but not so expensive. Okay, you want a design that is completely different from no one else in the world? That's very expensive, point blank. And we tell them, don't even hire us for level three. Hire us for two or one, and save your money to instead spend on other things, such as SEO, social media, good photography, and all of that. So if people dump all of their money simply on the design of the site, then they have no money for a budget for the other important things, SEO optimization, social media marketing, you know, content relationship management, or customer relationship management, and all of that stuff that's also very important. Our recommendation level two plus social media plus SEO. Because you've got an amazing site that no one else has and it's super uh, customized and pretty and all of that, but you still get no traffic because you didn't SEO, you didn't optimize your site, you're not promoting it on social media, you don't have a good marketing strategy. So this is the one that we would recommend. Let's get one more thing, then we'll take a break. Does this make sense? Any questions on that? On that idea? Yes? What is the company you work for, if you don't mind me asking? Sure. Uh, it's pmdinteractive.com. This is very common for most um, companies, uh, and for most people, you'll still go pretty far with a level one kind of site, but you just have to know that your site might not be super customized and it'll look like other people's. What would be like a rough average price for level two? Price-wise overall, Yes, price-wise, what we can say, uh, like from first-hand experience, you know, this has been like uh, six to nine thousand for the full expensive one, and then the basic one is like four to five thousand, and then the basic, most basic one, you know, one thousand to three thousand or so. 
Now, obviously, we've seen in plenty of places that I've seen the site sold for $250. Well, yes, but it's even less customized, it's even less featured, full-featured, it's even less unique and such. So you'll find plenty of prices, and depending on the experience of the company and the skill of the company and the requirements, yeah, you can, you can get a site down to $99 and all of that, but then those people that often sell at such a cheap price, they want to make it back up in the SEO, in the social media in the marketing strategy and all of that. So general prices there. And it always depends on the client and the results needed and lots of things because um, there's wiggle room, but that's a big, that's a general pricing scheme that's pretty common. Hourly, these things are often, you know, for those with experience and skills, it's often fifty to a hundred dollars an hour. I could easily hire someone at fifteen dollars an hour to do it, but you might not get the best results. Uh, there's plenty of places online where we can hire contractors, uh, especially international contractors, and they'll do it for five dollars an hour. But again, there's downsides of outsourcing and, and all of that. Let's get one more thing, then we'll take a break. We have all of these possibilities of built-in themes, but there's a couple of websites out there that focus just on themes. Look at this. If we go over to, what's it called? Uh, oh, elegantthemes.com. This is one of these places that is pretty pretty good. This focuses on themes and plugins and such uh, to improve your site. Elegantthemes.com. I'm not affiliated with them. My, my, my company is not affiliated with them. But just as a recommendation, Elegantthemes.com uh, for premium themes and plugins. <coughs> and tech support. So looking at this site, um, let's see, what are the prices at the moment? Yearly access, $89 per year, lifetime, one-time fee of $250. What you get here is access to all of the themes and plugins, updates, um, unlimited website usage. So here's that about I'm paying that amount and I can use this theme for seven sites. We get these updates and tech support and everything at this higher price. Cancel your membership at any time. So two forty nine is lifetime. Yes. Any site. Exactly. Yeah, it's a very good deal. That's you. Depending on your business, you can recuperate that rather fast. So now again, themes subscription service. But if you cancel, you can still keep the other thing that you have. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's one uh, I've used. Uh, they have some nice themes and features, plugins. Um, another one that's bigger and more famous is called ThemeForest.net. ThemeForest.net is part of the larger Envato marketplace. But this is ThemeForest. This focuses on themes, uh, starting from $2. So here, you don't buy a membership here, you buy the individual themes and plugins for as little as $2. You can go to different sections like the Video Hive, the Audio Jungle. What these are about is, I need stock footage, I need photos, I need you know graphics and such. And the Envato Marketplace is all about that. What this is, is basically different companies, different developers, 
uh, individuals and companies, they put their content here. They, this is like a, a marketplace, so anyone could then upload uh, content here for people to download. Elegant Themes is from one company, and they have their stable of themes and such. They are more of a marketplace. The good thing is there are reviews, there is commentary on the on the things. So if someone uploads a really terrible, ugly theme, it's going to get two stars. One star. So I'm not going to download it. I'm going to read people's comment that says, this was not a good theme. It, it deleted my database. So check the comments. But the way this one would be is I'm under Theme Forest, search for e-commerce. And I get 1,500 e-commerce themes. Now, what's that? Starting at 59? So, uh, we have themes and content from every platform. Be careful here. It, it's very common to accidentally buy a theme for Joomla, or buy a theme for Squarespace, and I've got WordPress. I bought a theme, whoops, I bought a theme for Dreamweaver. I'm not using Dreamweaver, we're using WordPress. The, the ones that are $2, if you say, what are those $2 themes? Those are usually for Dreamweaver. Uh, usually, you know, 20 to $50 end up is for WordPress. So be careful where what kind of theme it is. It'll tell you right there. Um, no, that's not me. That's not my themes. But you'll see... They'll be listed. They'll be listed for what platform it is. Oh, right here. WordPress. In WordPress. Like this one. But well, this one's only fourteen dollars. But this is a this is a Photoshop template. So let's say what is this Blazok e-commerce theme? You can click on these. You get a preview, live preview. So this is how this theme would look. Obviously, they're going to show it the most impressive. Um, the one you have to yes. Yeah. <laughs> All of these start off really for pay uh, at, at Theme Forest. Sixty dollars one time cost. And yeah, so okay, I, I don't want to pay sixty dollars. Well, look at various. Uh, items here. This has been sold 6,000 times. Let's do a little math here. 60 times 6,663. So in theory, that person's made $381,000 on that theme. 3,000 comments. Now, and Theme Forest takes their commission out of their sales. You don't have to worry about that. So they, may, they might not get $60 out of it. They may get, you know, 45 I don't know. But still, they, they get their cut. And you can see here, uh, well, this is a Power Elite author. Um, this author has has sold over $1 million uh, worth of merchandise on, on, on this site. They have these other accomplishments. And then again, comments. What are people saying about this theme? Uh, I would like to have some transparent space between my header and the top. Is there any CSS code? So they, the author replies here. Please contact our team here. Someone else says, I cannot use the full header width in your layout with WooCommerce. Please help. Someone says, do this, do that. You have to buy the theme first. Then you do this and you do that. So this is from 10 days ago, one day ago. So the way you would use these, you buy the theme, you click download, it gives you a file. Then in the WordPress site, that's where you upload it. Appearance, add new, upload. So when you get a theme from the built-in marketplace in WordPress, you just click install activity. Done. When you buy it from Elegant Themes or Theme Forest or these other sites, you have to upload the file that they give you, activate it, and then it works on your site. Hmm? Is the from their side to upload or just 
in order to desktop and then uh, you have to you have to download it from their site first to your computer yes and then you click upload here to the WordPress what's that pretty much but it's going to be a bigger file that is a complete theme but pretty much like a picture yes this will give you uh, it'll download it and uh, you, you have to upload it as a zip. One thing that I notice on the Mac that is helpful is that they unzip everything when you download it. You don't want that. You want your file still zipped when you upload it to your site. Yes. Yeah, sometimes I think uh, one of the hosting they have a limited amount oh, of what yeah. you have a download. It's, I tried, like I struggled for two days and I actually did the uh, FTP. Yeah, let me make a note of that. That's a good point. Sometimes uh, your providers have an upload limit. Uh, sometimes these themes are, you know, 10, 20 megabytes large or more, and then your provider might have a, an upload limit size. So something to make a note of here. Let's say um, to use a premium theme, find it on the theme site, purchase, download, don't unzip it. Your Mac will probably unzip it for you, you have to re-zip it. I don't remember how to zip files on a Mac, you probably right-click it and select compress or something. So don't unzip it. Uh, I might have heard the name, but I haven't used it. Template Monster. I don't recall using it, but I think I've heard the name. Twenty-six thousand premium themes. Again, whatever is here, I would I would look at the reviews. Oh, these are perfect five stars. But I would look at reviews and what people are actually writing. So probably this one's good. If you've heard good things about it, I, I think I've heard of it. And I would always check the reviews download uh, dashboard themes and new upload Zip. note your provider may limit zip uploads if so you need to use File Manager, FTP, to upload it instead. If that sounds technical, it's technical. You'll have to check with uh, calling up the provider and say, well, I need to upload the zip file to my server. How do you do that? And then they'll help you with it. But usually you can simply go to the dashboard and click Upload. If it's not uploading, it might be your file size limit. That's that's a that's a function of the of your provider. How much did you pay for it, and the level of service and other features? So you have to talk with them. Yes. So this also you can customize it to you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Usually these premium ones are very customizable built in because you're paying a premium, but every WordPress theme inherits the license of these are fully customizable however you want. So this is uh, this is very common. Also, this is what what we might do with a client. We talk to them and they and we tell them, okay, level one, level two. You've chosen level two. The way we do this is we're going to browse together for various themes. We're going to guide you and say why this one might be good or not. We're going to then uh, download it and we'll customize it as you want. The point of it of doing it like this is think about it in terms of a house. You know, you buy level one is buying a turnkey house. You buy a house. It's ready. It's just been built two years ago, you walk in, it's brand new house. Level two is you buy a bit of a fixer-upper. You know, a little house that's a little bit older, you fix it up, new cabinets, new kitchen, and so forth, but it's all about the location and the property values and all of that. Level three is you buy a plot of land, then you bulldoze it and you build your house, your log cabin. So that's level three. Most people in the real world, you're going to buy 
you know, one of these kinds of houses. So for your site, you're gonna buy, you're gonna, if you hire someone, you're gonna probably pay for one of these. It's way too much cost to pay that much. The ones that pay that much are big companies that are making lots of money on their e-commerce and all of that that can afford it. Um, but it's a lot of expense. Yes. No problem. <laughs> you saw all those dollar bills and it threw you off. Well, um, that's what I wanted to show for the moment. Let's take our first break. Think about this, that you can always get more templates at Template Monster, uh, Theme Forest, Elegant Themes, to get a better design for your e-commerce. We'll be back in 10 minutes at 7.30. We'll be back at 7.40. Just one moment.